first we installed a quantum key distribution system. Uh, we laid 290 meters of fiber uh, through four buildings on the campus, uh, single mode fiber. Then we installed Alice uh, at the building of the Center of Quantum Technologies. And we installed Bob at the building of, uh, in the office of the physics department. And uh, down, the, down the way, the communication went through the mathematics department. Uh, here you can see in Alice's uh, setup the entangled pair source with laser on, blue laser on. You can see Alice's polarization analyzer and Alice's rubidium clock, uh, which provides time reference for a timestamp unit. In Bob, you can see the Bob's polarization analyzer unit with four detectors and Bob's time timestamp unit. We have run uh, communication, uh, quantum key distribution. It worked perfectly. We noticed that all the statistics that Alice and Bob collect and display during the, qu the quantum key distribution, such as uh, coincidence rate, for detector clicking rate, uh, quantum bit error rate, uh, and key generation rate. We noted those statistics. Then we went to a strategically chosen location and cut the fiber. Well, actually not cut it. Uh, there was a connector strategically placed there just for convenience. Of course, you can cut the fiber connectorize always. And then in this location, we inserted Eve in between Alice and Bob. Uh, we aligned Eve, then restarted the whole communication, and Alice and Bob ran quantum key distribution again. We monitored and recorded the values of the parameters that uh, Alice and Bob monitor, and their statistics was just the parameters they monitor were just the same as before the attack. They, they ran perfect quantum, quantum key distribution, even though that now there was if in between running an intercept recent attack and having the complete copy of the key. Let's look at Eve uh, in a bit more detail. Uh, this is complete, installed, and actually running uh, Eve's dropper for a quantum key distribution system. This is fiber line from Alice coming to it, and this is fiber line going out to Bob. He, uh, this black blob is uh, Eve's copy of Bob's uh, polarization analyzer. So this is Eve's copy of Bob. The rest of the suitcase uh, is the fake it state generator. It contains, uh, you can maybe make out one laser and, uh, which provides background illumination and the four lasers which uh, form differently polarized pulse. Then the rest are polarization controllers, uh, fiber couplers, and some other components which are needed to form the fake it state properly. Uh, this unit, this unit, and this unit are the control electronics, del the delay generator for the fake state generator. Uh, then also uh, in if we detect the her detection uh, detected clicks uh, on a timestamp unit. Uh, this thing is a rubidium clock for the timestamp unit. And the clicks recorded on a timestamp unit are stored on the OLPE PC. In addition to this uh, quantum uh, uh, eavesdropping setup, we also record all classical communication between Alice and Bob, which occurs over internet. Uh, because then Eve can do the same sifting, uh, error correction, and privacy implication procedures, and finally get the same secret key as Alice and Bob. Uh, in this combination uh, of two eavesdropping points, well, this is really an easy part. It's just takes a couple hours to set up. And this, this is the hard part, which takes half a year to build. Uh, this combination provides if with complete knowledge of the secret cryptographic key. We have this setup on display in the bike shed. Please come and see. And it's actually partly running. And to do final check, uh, we uh, have actually succeeded in this experiment. We check and see at uh, a small, uh, small time cut of uh, the time diagram of clicks in EVE's four detectors recorded. Say, look, let's look at 10 milliseconds of this data. You see that there is a sequence of clicks recorded on each detectors, all in different times. Then we look at, at the data recorded by Bob over the same 10 millisecond period. Uh, well, this looks similar to me. 
Can you find any difference between the two? Uh, I will superimpose them together. I see that there is very good correlation. So whenever if has click, Bob also has click. The blue and red dots superimpose. But if you already spotted it, there is a single long dot where if had click, but not Bob had click. This sometimes occurs, so our control is not completely perfect. Uh, actually, we only can cause a click in Bob with 97% probability. And sometimes if sends a fake state, but Bob, Bob does not get a click. But this is completely not a problem because after transmission, Bob always reveals which click he actually had, the timing of those clicks. And then if just throws away those clicks which she failed to induce on Bob, so it's not a problem. And such a small deviation from unit uh, probability of inducing a click is trivial to hide. Uh, so actually the attack works. And we are sure we have 100% information on the secure key. Now I pass to Ilya Gerhardt to make conclusions. Oh, to make conclusions, my goodness. Okay, I saw just 10 minutes. So uh, I'm not about to conclude yet. I think, I think a little bit of stuff I still have left. Uh, okay, let's look for a workaround. Because let's say uh, over there in the bike shed and also the last couple of days when, when we were presenting the stuff uh, on another conference, there's always a question, hey, what, what are we doing? Because everything is secure on paper. Isn't there a workaround? This is just an imperfect detector. Yeah, okay. I think the, the big, biggest point, I, of course, there will be a workaround. Yes, there will be a nice photo detector, and the photo detector will tell you, okay, I'm blinded, and I do not detect single photons. It's just uh, bright pulse. And, but I think the, the, the important point here is really to realize that the security measure, by saying, well, we have this joint quantum state, we measure a click here and a click there, and later on we know, okay, this was a quantum state, is, this is not a security measure at all. So, so there's nothing super special about quantum cryptography. So this, we are, we are kind of back to, back to normal. And I think this experiment really proves it, that, that in any case there will be implementation flaws. So... Of course, you cannot only think about uh, just uh, freaking, uh, freaking out such a QKD quantum key distribution setup. You can also fake another thing. You can fake a uh, complete EPR source, Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen, this entanglement thingy. You can um, think about other experiments. So we, yesterday in the night at 4 o'clock preparing this, this talk, we were talking about maybe to fake a teleportation or whatever. But this is not really, really something which I would want to talk about. But um, again, the laws of physics that tell you, okay, if you have a quantum, correla quantum correlation which cannot be explained classically, does not mean that there is no eavesdropper. So a single click in a detector is, let's say, what I expect for a single photon. But in fact, if you look a little bit on the definition, or let's say people, let's say for 100 years of a photon, they've, they've wrote down, hey, what is a photon? My goodness. So, and... I think it was a pretty smart definition by Anton Zeilinger. This is a guy from Vienna. And he just wrote down, okay, a single photon or a photon is a single click on a detector. Yeah, but let's say if I, if I look to this attack, I think a single photon is not a click on a detector. It might be that a single photon launches a single click on a detector, but it's not the proof. So. And I think another thing is really very important. So if 